What is going on guys, welcome back, and today's video we're going to learn how to install NeoVim natively on Windows instead of using it in a Windows subsystem for Linux. So let us get right into it. Alright, so I already have a couple of videos on this channel about NeoVim, but I never showed you how to install it natively on Windows. I have a tutorial on how to set it up with the Windows subsystem for Linux, which is basically a Linux tutorial, but you can also do it on Windows using the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, and I myself have been using NeoVim mostly inside of the Windows subsystem for Linux. So just to show you what that looks like, I can open up here the Ubuntu terminal, I can navigate to the desktop or I am already at the desktop and I can say NV, which is a shortcut for NVIM. And I can open up a file here, for example, file.py, a new file, I can import time, I can do time sleep, 10, stuff like that, you can see the syntax highlighting. Uh, I can write the file and you can see it appears on my desktop. So I'm using here NeoVim inside of the Windows subsystem for Linux. That's one thing that you can do on Windows to run NeoVim, but you can also run it natively, uh, for example, with the command line, with the ordinary CMD command prompt, uh, which looks like that. I can navigate to the desktop and I can say here nvim test.py import os print hello world if os.path exists and stuff like that, you can see that this works, I can also create a file here, I can close it. Um, so that is also a possibility. And I'm the kind of person that always prefers native stuff more than uh, some artificial virtualizations. Now, I need to mention that some things that uh, work on Linux don't work on Windows because NeoVim is traditionally more used on um, Linux and maybe even on Mac but not so much on Windows. So a lot of the plugins are maybe Linux related and you're not going to be able to use them on uh, Windows without any problems, but at least the basic editor with some basic plugins um, is something that you can definitely set up on Windows natively. And this is what we're going to talk about today. For this, um, we're going to use the Choco, the chocolatey package manager. I recently made a video about this. Uh, you can watch that video to see how to use chocolatey. It's a basic package manager, which allows you to install packages on Windows in the same way that you do it on Linux. So if I want to install a new package, once I install chocolatey, I just have to say choco install and the package name. So I'm not going to go through the installation of choco or chocolatey here. Um, what you basically do is you just go to get started, you execute the command that is written there. So it's uh, this command here, you have to set the execution policy, you uh, execute this command, and then you basically have chocolatey installed. Um, and with that tool, we can now install NeoVim. So choco install NeoVim. And that is then basically uh, the installation. Now the important thing is which I'm not doing here right now, but I already have it installed. The important thing is that you need to run your terminal or your command prompt with administrator privileges. So we need to run as administrator, otherwise, you're not going to be able to add new software, but then just choco install NeoVim in my case already installed, as I said. Um, but in your case, it's then going to install it, you just need to accept the individual uh, steps. And then you have NeoVim installed. Now the problem is or not necessarily the problem. But the thing is, when you run NeoVim by typing nvim, and then maybe a file name, you're going to see the vanilla version of NeoVim. And this is because you don't have a configuration yet. So in my case, it looks like that because I already have here the airline plugin and I have also nerd tree when I use it and stuff like that. This is already a version with plugins. In your case, you're not going to have plugins, um, unless you already set it up. And because of that, we're going to now talk about how to install plugins. Um, and how to basically set up a configuration in the first place. And in order to do that, you need to open up your Explorer, or you can just use the run function here. And you want to navigate to app data. So you can just go to run so Windows and R, uh, and then app data between percentage uh, signs so percent app data percent, uh, which is going to open up this directory here, then you want to go to app data, and you want to go to local. And inside of local, you want to create a new directory called nvim. Now, if it already exists, just go inside it. But if it does not exist, you create a new directory called nvim. And inside of it, you want to create a uh, init.vim file. So by default, you're not going to have that file. So I can move it, for example, now to the desktop. And now if I open up NeoVim, you can see it's the basic config without any plugins. This is what it looks like for you. Probably you open it up and it doesn't have anything. It doesn't have line numbers. It doesn't have any plugins. It's just basic vanilla NeoVim. 
Um, so you can still use it and stuff like that, but um, I think you want to have a configuration, you want to have some plugins. So what we want to do is we want to go into that directory, you want to right click, want to create a new file, init.vim. And then we can navigate to that directory. So we can say CD change directory percent app data percent CD back CD local CD nvim. And then we can use actually nvim to change the init vim file. And here we can now set some basic settings. So for example, set number, set relative number. Uh, maybe you want to I don't know, uh, set uh, the mouse to active, I think you can say set mouse equals a to be able to use the mouse, uh, you want to set a tap stop and stuff like that. This is some basic configuration, whatever you put in here, next time you open up NeoVim, uh, you're going to see that you now have the settings, we have the line numbers. Now we have the relative line numbers. Uh, and this is how you can create your configuration. Now, if you want to have a tutorial on a NeoVim config that's awesome and that looks good and that uh, works for different programming languages and stuff like that. I have a very popular video on my channel that you can watch where I explain how to uh, set up NeoVim professionally. In this video, I don't want to focus too much on the configuration. Uh, you just need to know that this file exists and you can put some stuff into it. So in my case, if I go ahead now and um, or actually, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to go into, uh, into the Explorer, I'm going to remove this file again, I'm going to go to my desktop and get the file that I had before. Uh, this is an advanced configuration file now. Um, and the basic idea here is that I have Vimplug in it. And this is something that you need to understand. Um, in order to use Vimplug, you have to install it. And you cannot just say call plug begin call plug and without having Vimplug on your system. And in order to install it on Windows, you just go the same way that you do it uh, for the Linux installation, you go to the uh, Vimplug GitHub repository. And instead of executing the Unix, uh, the, the Unix Linux command with sh, you just scroll down to NeoVim and then to Windows PowerShell, and you have to run this command here. So you basically um, copy this command, you open your PowerShell, probably with administrator privileges, I think, um, and you paste in that command, which for some reason, it doesn't do. There you go. Uh, and then it's going to execute it. it's going to load um, Vimplug, the Vimplug plugin, um, it's going to install it, and then you can just use it. So that's the whole science behind it, you don't need to do any, anything fancy, you just have to execute this command in the PowerShell, and then you're going to be able to use this call plug hashtag begin call plug hashtag end. And in between all you need to do is you need to provide plug and a link to a GitHub repository, which is a Vim plugin. All these are Vim plugins here. Now, as I mentioned, not all of the plugins are compatible with Windows, some of them require you to have a Linux bash terminal, whatever. Um, and a lot of them will also require certain tools. So for example, the basic, uh, the, the best example here is the tag bar plugin. If you want to use this, uh, uh, if you want to use the tag bar plugin, uh, which I have bound to f8, which can be used in different uh, programming languages to display certain things. In this case, now here in the config file, come on, uh, it displays the variables and the mappings. Um, but if you want to use that plugin, you need to have C tags on your system and C tags is something that you probably don't have by default. Uh, but the good thing is you can just go ahead and say Choco install C tags, same for Node.js, same for uh, Python and stuff like this. Some things are not so easy to install. So if you have a dependency that is not available for Choco, maybe you have to go a more complicated route. At the end of the day, using NeoVim on Linux is more convenient than using it on Windows. But if you want to have this native solution, so that you can just use NeoVim uh, inside of your basic command line, this is how you do it. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.